Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Couch Crunch Podcast. Um, you know, I hope everybody's enjoying their Christmas Eve. Uh, you know, have fun guys out there. Everyone enjoying the holidays. Um, we're going to get into some The Boy in the Huron, actually. And uh, we're going to be talking about this movie in particular because I just felt like, I definitely feel like this movie was really well done. And as an anime fan, I feel like it pays homage to the community you know what i mean oh yeah just like the growth of his career you know miyazaki he's definitely a legend in the game as far as like film and animation in general it is definitely held a legacy throughout the years yeah see that this is possibly his, his last film and it all comes together so fantastically now know? now i'm new to his movies in general because i think i just checked out um i checked out spirited away spirit away i'm sorry spirit away it was a good movie you know the visuals the story the characters like they were they were all well done um yeah. a little bit of wonky like for me i always get confused with like the storyline like the way he kind of tells the stories but you know i i'm not familiar with like his movies but i I'm, i was i was told by you actually that um that uh, you know spirit away was actually nominated for like a was it nominated or was it did it win actually like an oscar i think it did uh, right yeah, yeah it won the oscar in the early 2000s one of those uh award shows yeah it, it, it's the first uh anime animated uh film to win an oscar during that that time so it was pretty it's a crazy achievement bro it's typically it's mostly western you know stuff in the states that win those awards most of the times but it, it, it was undeniable at that time the spirit away took that away you know nobody could see past the the glory of what that left behind the mark and yeah pop culture in general it was pretty crazy yeah so hey, yeah, from it, there it's going on in the states yeah it was like a different time era where it was you know I feel like movies like that can actually be mentioned in like the Oscar. Like, I don't know. It was a different time back then because I feel like animes now, like they wouldn't even give them the time of day to actually like be nominated for something in the Oscars. <laughs> like nowadays, really? yeah. completely different dynamic. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was like just a one time thing. It seemed like yeah. nowadays they just take like all these, uh, they don't really put much effort into animation as far as the category. It's like they just give it to Paul's baby or some throwaway animation that came out that year. But yeah. uh, hopefully I'm hearing that Boy and Aaron might be actually nominated this year for uh, the Oscars. So who knows? Maybe he might be actually part of it again. That'd be kind of crazy to see. Now uh, what now I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some things. I feel like the most thing that really drew me in um definitely the visuals the visuals definitely looked like it was really up to par when it came to anime like i felt like the motions like it, it's just like the the way they move through the scenes it, it just feels so lifelike like when you look back oh, yeah. like i mean i feel like that's modern technology as you could tell like when it comes to animation but i feel like yeah. when you go back and look at some of the older animes you can tell like how much fluently it moves like it actually like the characters within themselves like the movements within themselves are like characters itself yeah and from what i know this is like more traditionally done versus like you know the more modern way of doing things how everything's more 3d and cgi like AI and yeah. stuff right yeah like hello Miyazaki, he's like known to do more traditional hand-drawn kind of storyboarding and the way his animations are so it's you can definitely tell in this and it kind of especially the, the opening scene like with the flames of him going through to try to find his mother due to the fire it, it kind of reminds me of uh, actually an anime that came out this year pluto it's like this kind of like 
a shuddering, sketchy style of like the way the animation was going while he was trying to run throughout the house and, and get a, escape out from the flames. It it reminded me of like some of the parts in uh, Pluto. If everybody's familiar with that anime that came out on Netflix, yeah, I was like, oh wow, I wonder if that's the same animator that worked with him on, on that one. But yeah, it's definitely he's definitely top notch when it comes to and. Uh, animated films like his whole catalog pretty much yeah yeah and I, I just feel like uh, you know the, the animation is really well done the characters um, I think we get a little bit of backstory like I, I, you know for starters like guys if you, you don't want to know too much about the movie you might want to click out of this episode and you know obviously go watch it I really high, highly recommend watching it because it's it's that well <laughs> like but when it comes to this movie, like the like the main character, right? Which is yeah. I don't even remember his name. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like Japanese names for me are difficult to kind of pronounce. Um yeah. so I know it started with an M. Do you remember? <laughs> like I don't really remember. But like it uh, starts with him, right, as the boy. And you know, you kind of, and it kind of seems like the time period is kind of like what in the 1930s around there, like something like that, like during like World War One or something, like war, either well, one or two. two, 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 yeah, World War yeah. Two, yeah, it's like during that time, the war is going on. That's where you see the opening scene of them flaming up yeah. houses and unfortunately killing people. Yeah, yeah. You know? So it starts in that time period, which is an interesting time period to kind of start off with. Um, it's something about that era where it's like it, it pays a lot of homage to like the Japanese culture, you know, besides the whole war and people dying and stuff like that. Like I'm saying during that time period is kind of where, you know, a lot of traditional Japanese culture things kind of took place. Um, oh, yeah. When it comes to the main character, it was interesting to kind of see him like jump to the fire and stuff like that. Like, you know, there was like some sort of fire that started initiated and I don't know how it started, actually, but, you know, um, when he went to when he seen the fire, I think he kind of knew that his mom was in there. I don't know how, but like he felt like his mom was already in there. And I mean, his mom was in the war, so we don't get too much like too much detail with like the character himself. I mean, uh, with his mom. Yeah. Um, so it was interesting because like he dove into the actual fire. To, to see if he can rescue his mom. And, um, you know, he just, he see, he happened to see his mom actually in there that was actually, you know, burning alive pretty much. And, yeah. you know, like it was, it, I was it, it already like from that moment, I was like, whoa, this, uh, this is, you can kind of tell like what type of movies you're getting into when, you know, there's already like some sort of lost or something like that. You know what I mean? Right. And it, it kind of goes to like the actual director of this, you know, Mizaki. He, he lost his mother. And you can see a lot. He put himself in the main character's shoes and how he. Oh, wow. Yeah, he actually went through something similar in real life when World War II was going on and uh, when he lost his mother. That's so it. it's like. That's nice. That's what, what a way to kind of like really do. That's, a re, that's very creative, actually. Because yeah. what better way to kind of connect with a character to take some actual parts of your actual life to put them in there? That's that's real unique. Yeah, you can seriously see his life bled throughout this film, like certain things he's referencing to himself, even within like the, the main character, Mehedo, Mehedo, I think that's his name, Mehedo. Yeah, you know, I don't know, I'm sure. Yeah, that's that what right I'm part. saying. Like, we're terrible with names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, just, like, the way he carries himself is, like, he's he doesn't show too much emotion. He's, like, really try to keep all his his emotions inside, pent in inside, and he's on, like, a stone face most of the time throughout the film. And it's, you, just, you can really see, because that's how uh, Middle is, and that's how a director is in real life. It's, like, he's really strict and, really just direct with his his emotions yes yeah. doesn't really emote too much so I, I found that interesting that he pretty much this is like the child version of him how he sees himself throughout this film 
which is different right i mean i feel like do we get to see that in other in uh, like in any of other his of his films did we get to see any of that because i mean oh, he I, I, part, not really. nope. that's what that's what i'm saying like he he's always he's always conjured up some sort of interesting stories between you know each each film that he made but yeah. I feel like with this one in particular, since, you know, this is supposed to be his actual last film, quote unquote, we don't know exactly if it's going to be. But if it is, like, what a way to kind of wrap things up. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's yeah. right. Um, yeah, because most of his films are like the protagonist, like the main character is typically like a little girl or a girl. For some reason, he, he likes to use like a innocent girls for his main characters, but in this one particular, it's, it's a, a boy. It's a guy. It's a boy. So, yeah. I believe his last film was a guy too. That was supposed to be his last one, but the, yeah, this one is like more like literally it's him as a kid. Yeah, it seems like he goes it off of. And um, I think uh, you know it. When you're looking at animation, you're not really thinking like the visuals is probably the first thing that everybody's going to probably cling to and say, hey, it looks great. Um, the art style is definitely because like, you know, you can kind of see the similarities in any like all his other films. That's his style, right? Like the way they kind of look. So right. you, you get to see a lot of like similarities between like Spirit Away. Like, so if you look at the old ladies that actually take care of um you know the main character when he gets actually you know when he injures himself with a rock which is i was like what the fuck <laughs> and like oh yeah. i got i got yeah, the got con food. yeah i got the concept he wanted to get out of school and stuff like that but it was kind of like i mean you i don't know dude you could have just like rubbed dirt on your face or something i don't, I don't know they could have <laughs> like or or just like scratch your knee or something like you you fucking yeah. decided to take a sharp rock and hit it against your right temple like <laughs> Yeah, you know, blood. Like, right yeah. like i'm shocked that he didn't like like just instantly die like when he put that much pressure in that in that spot that's a that's a real sensitive spot man yeah but i guess that he's that desperate to get out from being bullied in school like as a you know a new kid or whatever or not. well yeah he didn't you you could tell he wasn't like too fond from you know having to see his mother's death which is a rough experience for any child at his age i i don't even think we even got at his age right like i think he was like if i had to speculate he's probably like 12 around there yeah. right like yeah you're like 10 or 12 somewhere. yeah around there um yeah. which is rough for his age for uh, you know for sure but yeah. you know definitely we he definitely didn't was he was not that I guess you would say open to his new life that his dad, you know, wanted wanted for him. You know what I mean? Like, because his dad owns a company. So, you know, he already has like, and you know, back then, you know, if you own like, you know, a company, any any company, you know, if it's actually producing a lot of like whatever, you, whatever it is, like if it's products being sold or whatever you're selling, it's, it's, you know, back then it was like, it was, you get to actually make a lot of money quicker because you know the value was a lot lower than it is how it is today and obviously right um so he was kind of like the rich kid that wasn't wasn't really receptive to his lifestyle um and that that's kind of rough for any kid his age um and then you, then the thing is like his so the sister cuz that I, I thought that was interesting cuz his dad marries not marries but it gets with the sister of his wife, his ex-wife. Oh, so, yeah. So, yeah, she looks a lot like his mother. And, yeah. you know, I, at least, at least he was respectful. Like, he's, he wasn't like this douche that always, <laughs> that, that treats like, you know, whoever, whichever woman that comes after the mom. Cause, you know, as a child, like, you're, you're, you're probably thinking like, oh, I don't, I don't know who the fuck this is. I kind of want to get them out of my life. I hate you. Get away from me. You know what I mean? Like, but he wasn't right. like that towards her. He actually was just very respectful. But yeah, I think it made it more comfortable for him to, knowing that it's probably his aunt, I, I believe, because that's his mom's sister. Right. You know? So maybe that made it more comfortable for him to adjust yeah, to that. Yeah. So it was so. So if that was his aunt, that's what made it weird. Because like when she was like <laughs> when she was like, you're going to have a little brother. I was like, yeah, this is weird. Like, 
yeah, that's that, that nigga's gonna be his cousin. Yeah. Like, in a way. <laughs> but at the same time, it is his, his brother. His brother because, because it's from dad. dad. Yeah. yeah. That's weird, it's, bro. That's pretty crazy. Isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's a different culture, man. Um, yeah, but, but it's actually a common thing back then. Well, at least in like foreign countries, like a lot of... Would, a lot of their dads would get married to the same, uh, the, the mom's uh, sisters or their cousins. Like, it was like a tradition back then. That's so just to weird. keep it inside the family. But yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, when things started to really like kick off was, um, you know, obviously when you met the, and we're not, we're saying Huron, but I'd say, I think it's Huron or something like that. The way that they kind of say it in the movie is kind of differently. It's not Huron. Yeah, and that's the thing, too, I meant to say this in the beginning. The, the original title to this in, J- in Japan is called How Do You Live, which I think is a more fitting title for the movie. Yeah, the Amer- absolutely. The, the American title, for some reason, they, they wanted to call it The Boy and the Heron, but... Well, because we're a lot more slower, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, it, it makes more <laughs> sense for how the overall story, Well, How Do You Live, for more fitting title. Well, I, I typically think that... You know, I think like they try to always change because it, it's not the first time they always do that when it's actually a movie, yeah. a movie from Japan or another foreign country that's being imported over here. Is they they feel like they have to change the title to 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 be more appealing, I guess, to us. Right. And it's kind of like sometimes the original name really sticks with the actual art itself, right? Like, wouldn't you want it to kind of still remain the same? Yeah, like, exactly. I wouldn't want to change that. Like, that should be. It, it, you should just accept it the way it is. Yeah. But and he, even in the promotion, like uh, they didn't really promote it. They actually wanted to go the route not having any kind of ads or commercials for like showing the previews of the movie over there. Over here, they showed you know most of the trailers and mm. everything because because he wanted to keep it under wraps and surprise and especially it being his possible last film. But. Right. Yeah, it's it's a it's a totally different way of rolling out a film versus over there. So when he met the bird, it was it the the bird stuck out. The bird stuck out to me. I just felt like it was kind of like a weird a weird fucking animal. Like I mean, it, I, I I don't tip, I don't even know exactly what type of bird it is. To be honest with you, I think it's like a pelican or some shit. <laughs> yeah, pelican. Okay, all right. Um, the really unique colors. I like the the saturations of the colors and everything on the co- on the bird. But yeah, the like bird, it, I don't know. At some point, it was like kind of creepy looking. And the, the reason why I say that is because of the eyes look all like fucking red and shit. Like it's like not red, but like yellowish, and it kind of looked like it was like uh, it was like when it started to talk. I was like, what the fuck. <laughs> Yeah, because they had like human teeth and the like, gums. Was yeah, out, like, like it, yeah, you couldn't really see what what was in his mouth at first. It just looked like right. you know, it just looked pink. I was like, is there right. somebody else within the bird? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? You can kind of tell from the poster too. You see like a little eye hiding inside the mouth. Yeah, it's kind of hanging at it. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. Like at first, you you know. We weren't really like I wasn't really sure like what exactly was was the purpose of the bird. Like we know that he was yeah. trying to reach out to him, but he was trying to like communicate with him, saying like, "Yo, you you know, lure him back, lure him into this I don't know this kind of world where you know time, space, and everything is different." So yeah. when he when he did that, I was I was confused because like. Maybe his mom was actually still alive. That's what made me believe, like, the bird is actually his friend. Well, sure. I'm not going to spoil it, but, you know, we're going in, like, a line. Right. But, um, you know, I the bird... I actually thought he was, like, a villain or something. Like, I really, I, yeah, I really thought he was, like, kind of trying to lure him into, like, a trap or something. Or, you know, the way that he was trying to teleport him with the frogs being on top of him and stuff like that. And, you know, right. uh the lady, the lady of the house, you know, is, is, his auntie, I guess you would say, you know, she's trying to protect him from, I guess, being in that other world, you know, yeah. because I feel like the parents knew about, well, they didn't know too much about it. Like they, they know of the castle. They knew that something was in the castle, but they don't know 
what what goes on within the castle like they didn't know right. any of that i think the main people that knew was those old ladies like one of the old ladies like told the, t- the tale of the urban legend of the, the castle right because they've been around the, be. right because they were they were around for cent- like i wouldn't say centuries but like they've been they were around since like the old man right know? yeah um, so it was it's interesting to see that <laughs> Uh, all the animals that kept trying to lure him in back to the castle. It's kind of creepy the way the frogs were talking to him and the other animals would be like, come with me, come with me, trying to lure yeah. him in there, right? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of disturbing in that kind of way. <laughs> Uncanny. <laughs> yeah. So then, you know, we decide to, you know, man, this is sum it up, I guess you would say, because I feel like we'll be here all day talking about it but just to like to sum it up like you know to take bits and pieces from you know this movie in general like the story really really did stick like it really resonated with you know with itself because um the main the main concept of the story was just kind of like trying to i from like you said before i think you you nailed it off like off air where you was like it's more about kind of Lip, like trying to get through that pain of losing his mother. Oh yeah, yeah, like the mourning of his mom. Yeah, yeah. like he's trying to work through it mentally. It seemed like because I, I, I feel like most of it, like, like what you said, I think it's a conspiracy, but we don't even know if that's the truth. Like, if he really knocked himself out with the rock, like technically he's probably still in bed and probably thinking like none, none of that stuff ever happened. Right. Um, which would, which probably. would make sense. But at the same time, I mean, the the stories that this man makes all the time, like they're they're just way out there. They're way out oh, there. Yeah. yeah, it's it's kind of you can tell. It's like even they even quoted Alice in the Wonderland. One of the characters actually took a quote from like one of the, I forget that cat's name, the, the purple cat in Alice in Wonderland. But one of the characters actually took a quote from it, and uh, you could tell he was inspired from Alice in the Wonderland. The way half of the movie is like taking place in reality and then like the second end of it is like takes place inside the castle with all this fantastical mm. uh, imagination dreamlike stuff happens and it kind of uh the way i have interpreted that world of being once he, he enters into that dimension it, it kind of came off like a, a afterlife or like the way he's seen like his past relatives of his mom in there as a kid and his great grandfather. It, it's like it kind of represents like the afterlife and like the way you see those little small spirits that get eaten by the pelicans after them trying to survive inside right. that world. It's like it really it seems like it's like a more spiritual world. Kind of like spirit spirit That's away. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it, it paint, I feel like some of it kind of like took like resemb- like resembles a lot of like the events that happen in Spirit Away. Yeah, even like uh, a lot of his other past films, like Princess Mononoke and like Castle in the Sky, you can see like a lot of like references from all his other movies put into one into this movie. A lot of people call, caught on to that, this being like his magnum opus of him doing like- Like his style, like he'll it. take bits and pieces from his last movie and then put it in here, but then add like right. a little kind of twist onto this new version. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, pretty much like little Easter eggs for like his fans of his past works to see, which I thought was pretty cool for him to do too, thinking that it might be his like last film. Yeah, because like unfortunately, I think, yeah, because unfortunately, I think like this film, I feel like you will have to watch it like a few times to kind of understand it a little more. I feel like one time is probably not enough. Oh, know? yeah, it's like a lot of metaphors and like a lot of. It's a lot of things you can miss if you just blank. You know, it's a lot going on once you get into that dream world he goes into. Yeah. And I like a lot of the the voice acting in this too. There's like a lot of big actors in this. Yeah, like, I, I, I love to be honest, I wasn't I wasn't even sure. I wasn't even sure about like what what really like what who who played who because I I couldn't even tell. I couldn't tell. Yeah, like. like they really transformed their voices, like a lot of them. It's they had Batista in there playing as one of the the birds that you see later on in the film. The the bird captain. Oh, the king, the king bird. King, yeah. The king, I mean, yeah. 
and it's, which makes sense because he's a big pool. dude he's a big fucking bird makes sense right well in a full plane as the the dying bird that you see later on that could catch the little spirits and that was a little cool little side story too it was like the pelicans in order for them to survive they had to eat those little ball spirits that came from that that realm and uh it's kind of like an ecosystem of them having to survive in a way but it's like if they don't they they die off from not having that energy from the spirits which mm-hmm. i thought was like interesting to see in that world and even like even like the the way that the the dimension was introduced like ps is like a bunch of different doors you can go through that go into different time periods i thought that was interesting too that like even when those those birds or those creatures would come through the door they would turn back to normal versus when they're inside their dream world they're like so giant and like <laughs> mystical looking you know i thought that was a, a, a different just was just the position of showing the two worlds at the same time mm-hmm. as that's cool to see what did you like what did you really think about the film in general i know i didn't really talk about mine too much but like i kind of want to know yours oh yeah it's like i was saying it, it seemed like the, the entire story was really telling his his way of like mourning for his mother and like you can see like in the front of the beginning of the film when she died in the flames and then later on you see her younger as a kid and she has like flame fire powers you know you see her in the distance when he comes across like this other character which i wish i this is the reason why i want to see it again because i didn't it seemed like that that one lady that uh helped him out when he he was selling against the sea and uh it was like some pirate looking lady and she was like helping him like find his way to his aunt you know yeah then, she like, was dope she, she, her, she was know? cool as hell she, i like yeah, her character she was. yeah but it seemed like she had like a lot to do with i don't know like his past too like i don't know if he she was like in his past life in some kind of way knowing like this is like a realm that's related to him so I'm, I'm curious to see if I'll watch it again if she's like related to him somehow I don't know if I can pick up on that but yeah it's like a lot of the it was show like his his grandfather as like a time god in a way like controlling this whole dream world of like with these little blocks so like representing uh tombstones like memorial stones of like past people and like controlling the time through that way of keeping the balance of time and and, uh, and uh and space with that that big rock that was above him that he has in that he was in that field with which we and, we uh, still don't even know like where it came from that was the thing yeah. like i i just know that it came from like outer space and um oh you know what that now that I'm really thinking about it, that rock looks like the same rock that he hit himself with. Like, it just looks like a bigger version of that. I wonder if that represents the rock he hit himself with. It did look like it. It did look like it. Like, you know what? That would... I'm not really thinking about it. I wonder if that was the same rock. Like, if I look back at that rock he hit himself with. Huh. I just thought of that now. <laughs> it didn't know that because, like, as you really look... Because it, it got smaller, actually, because from what... When we seen it, when it first dropped down, it was like this huge kind of like rock that came like, like it had holes in it and stuff like that, like different kind of yeah. portals. And, yeah. you know, it, it didn't look like how the way it did when we were seeing in front of the old man. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, because they both had like that, that sharp edge to them. Like they both was like pointed, like the way they were shaped. That does make so, that does that that that, that kind of raises the eyebrow. It definitely does. Yeah, that makes me curious now. Like, I wonder if I go back and, and see it. Like, if yeah, that's like the same rock that's above his grandfather in that town room, it's a bigger. That'd be that'd be cool to tie that all in together. Like, <laughs> that'd be a cool concept to mess with. But absolutely, yeah. But yeah, that, this it's like very uh, metaphoric when a out of like all his films that's what i really gained out of this one especially that stood out to me it's like this one is like a lot of metaphors and it's not like really direct when it comes to a narrative 
And a, a lot of people I, I noticed online was they kind of disagreed with it because they're so used to it, the way he's kind of he tells stories in his other films. And but this one is like very like open ended. It's not like really direct of what it's trying to tell you in the story. And I think he did that on purpose to really have you like interpret it whichever way you you know imagine it because it's a lot of imagination to plays a part when it comes into when he goes into that dream world. So it seemed like it was just him mourning over his mom and trying to get over that hump of him actually finding out who his mom was when she was a kid mm. and it going on that adventure with her, finding the aunt and everything. But the one thing I didn't really get is uh, the purpose of his aunt going to that place in the first place. Like I was, I was wondering why she, she like why did she wonder why, why did she wander into the actual rock? Right, correct. I was confused on that too. And then yeah, it was it. So I, I was confused on that. And then the part where she was actually laying in the bed. Um, and you know the paper kind of like snakes were kind of like protecting her or something like that. Um, oh yeah. What I, I didn't get, what I didn't get about that one was the way that she kind of changed like her persona. Like she changed it as soon as like he was trying to save. Like you know he was he was like yo we got to go back home we got to get out of here. And right. She was like no I hate you. Like where did that come yeah. from? Like I was confused on that. Yeah, it's kind of like she was possessed at some point, like while she was inside that room, like she was like possessed by something. She was so pissed off that she, she was like trying to, I believe they called it like a birth room, like a room, cause she was like pregnant during the time when she went inside that castle. Right. She wanted to have the baby over there actually. Yeah. Right. But it just, yeah, I wonder what made her so destined to go there instead of like having it inside the regular world, you know? That, that that really makes me want to watch it again as well too. That That's really what I mean. Like I feel like I feel like you gotta watch this. I wouldn't say like a few times, but I would say more than definitely more than once if you want to try to understand oh, yeah. like the story. Yeah, and I think those paper things because I know in Japanese lore, like a lot of a lot of times they use like paper as like sealing for spirits, like protecting the keep spirits like sealed away. So I think that's where that room represented with the paper snakes and everything of like uh, selling, I guess, whatever it was possessing her inside that room of mm. when she was trying to give birth. That's just my interpretation of what I'm thinking, you know, I'm just going off a bit of Japanese lore. But yeah, it's uh, that's the one that's the one question I really had from the film. It's like, why? Why did she want to go in there to have a kid? But but yeah, it's uh, it it seemed like a, it was kind of him coming to a grips of the afterlife. It seemed like overall to me, that's what this movie was about. I thought like, I thought what was interesting. Yeah. I thought what was definitely interesting was um, so we did get a little bit of insight on the old man. I mean, it seemed and it was kind of confusing at first too when we started seeing like um a little bit like when they were explaining his story and he was saying like he kind of went insane from reading too much books i beg to differ i think that's a fucking fantastic thing and we, we need to start doing that more nowadays but um <laughs> right. hey so he he just drove himself nuts i guess um and then i guess like when he stumbled across like this rock that's when he decided like you know he i think he tried to build this like kind of building or any like the, the castle around the rock so that way that it's actually like sealed off I guess from anybody kind of entering the area um, right. but what was interesting was like when he went in there I guess he's been in there for centuries or something like that I wouldn't say centuries but like years and years I guess I don't know how much time has gone by like he's like father of time in, in this kind of universe yeah um, exactly um, so what was interesting was I guess like it was just his time and he tried to get the main character to um, take his place right. and in a way it was kind of saying like you know the creator himself wanted to be replaced and you know he can create the world the way that he wanted to the way yeah. that you know what I mean like that's why he was confused at the end when he chose the main character chose he was like i'd rather go back to that world because it's where my friends are and my family and 
you know what I mean? Like, I, it, I'll take it for what it is, but you know, he, the creator is like, but that world is like imperfected. Like it's, it's so much wrong with it. It's dying inside or something like that. And I think it was just interesting to kind of just see like, you know, somebody, somebody that created its own world, you know, being, being kind of like taught in a way that's like, look, you've been in this world for this amount of time, but in the end, like, I'm, I'm not going to just kind of run away from everything I, I just left. I'd rather go back and deal with it rather yeah. than kind of create this, this other world where most of the things within it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. You know, like it's just a fantasy kind of tale world. You know, right. it's kind of like the the Pan's Labyrinth. Oh like, yeah, that's the comparison. Great at Chris Perry. Yeah, like, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? It's kind of like it's just a world within a world, but you know, like it didn't really ma- it didn't matter to him. He wanted to really like he was actually just really trying to get the, his aunt out of there. But in the process, like, you know, he did manage to see his mother, which was a, you know, kind of like a, you know, it was it was a kind of a great experience for both both hands, really, because, you know, he didn't really get to yeah. say much. I mean, we didn't see much of him actually, you know, his relationship between him and his mom. So this was right. what we got from, you know, from that experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a great point, too, because it seemed like like you said, it's like instead of like living in this dream, he wanted to set himself back into reality and really do what the, what he was grieving with, as far as like what he went through in the beginning of the movie, right? The loss of his mother, and yeah, it seemed like I could see a lot of Hiro Miyazaki, and that's another reason why I think he put himself into this movie because like even the grandfather character. It seemed like that was like a retirement version of himself. He was putting into that character as well. It's like he wanted to pass on the baton to like maybe his son or like somebody else as part of his company of uh, Studio Ghibli. Yeah. Of like uh, it's time for me to you know wrap this up and pass on these these stones to somebody else of taking on this dream I had. But instead, you know. It, the, the world falls apart and he goes back to reality, you know, <laughs> and it goes back into his hands, <laughs> which you can see him, uh, the actual director, he takes it back to his own hands and he still wants to take control of his own films, which is like such a great way like to wrap things up of right. showing what he wanted to do with his his art and his, his way of telling a story, which is like meta in us so much so many ways yeah i definitely felt like yeah i agree with you 100 percent. i it, it's just it, so just seeing like how it just panned out from strictly just a boy right strictly just a boy just you know kind of trying to live a normal life after dealing with death and then going going on this and like kind of going on this path where it's like it's really it's 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 about really self-reflection if you think about it it's like oh, yeah. a, in a way of self-reflecting on like how he's kind of been dealing with his own problems um exactly. in a way this was kind of like very therapeutic for him <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean like what a way exactly. to kind of have therapy you know <laughs> yeah going through like a whole dream world where you these birds are trying to eat you alive and like like, yeah, this speaking is, of those little bird things, those things were kind of creepy. Like the way they were trying to eat him and try to capture him. And shit. Yeah, I mean, when he was like dying, like the the one that was dying on the ship, like it was like, what type of pelican is this thing? Like it's, like it has like this weird kind of like breathing fucking neck thing. Like you know what I mean? Like oh, it's yeah. it's weird. It's not even a fucking pelican. Birds are, are the the thing. The, the, I feel like they should have put Big Bird in there. Like you know, <laughs> yeah, I just so feel like birds in here. Bird shit, birds, different types of birds, and yeah, and even even the heron himself, the 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 guy that we eventually see that's living inside the pelican, and he comes out, he has a big ass nose, and he's like, a, I don't, I guess he's like some kind of troll or something. I didn't get the whole, I didn't get the whole though, I didn't get the whole uh, 
you know, um, when he when he when he actually uh, shot him with the with the bow and they actually went on his beak. Oh yeah. Like oh, I didn't right. get like they had to plug that for him to get his powers back. I was I was what? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I think th- I think they did that because he couldn't really fit inside the bird again because he was like he couldn't stuff himself inside. So it, it didn't fit well when he was when that hole was there. I guess. It, I wonder how the bird is surviving in the fucking. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, is it the bird alive? Is it his own thing, or is it just like a skin that he wears? That's how I was trying to I figure out. I feel like it's a too. skin, yeah. Yeah. It's just like a, a way of armor with the hair on. Yeah, and towards the end, it was kind of confusing, too, because... Not confusing, uh, well, sort of. For me, at least. A, a lot of things don't make sense. I'm a little slow. Um, sure. But, you know, after the place got destroyed, like, you know, after the place had got destroyed um we started seeing you know you've seen the hero on actually and he was like um he's like do you still remember everything that just happened and he goes yeah i do and he goes well why how is that possible because you know typically like i'm guessing like i don't know if this has been done before but he was kind of saying like well you're supposed to already have forgotten about what happened so are you hanging on to like some sort of charm or anything it was like you know i he had the old lady in one piece of block from the blocks that he had supposed yeah yeah and it just it to me it was kind of like what was what what was that part you know that's why i'm a little confused about right there it's like so he he hanged on to that as a memory but what was he supposed to do with it yeah I, i think that kind of represented like his own memory like in a way like those stones because those are like memorial stones that's what the the guy of time said he yeah said like yeah. these are people that passed away and like to keep time in line to keep those blocks you know balanced on each other and i think that one block that he kept it was like a resemblance of that world of that memory of like him learning that lesson from that you know that journey he went on i i think that's what that represented it's just oh, like okay. a life lesson pretty much of like what he knows of from his mom his, the lost memory of his mother gotcha yeah that makes more sense yeah that's what I, at least i interpret it as like a memory a memorial storm of his mom or something like that yeah just some a grieving thing but, yeah, that's what I mean by it. It's like so much symbolism in this in this movie. It's like come out of things, symbolize something and represent something else. That's that may be like something minor in the real world. <laughs> you know, I don't how, know. How would you rate it? I probably get it. Oh, I'm struggling between a, a nine and an eight. Oh, it's like somewhere between there. That's, that that is yeah, bro. You've been uh, you've been shocking me lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I really like this film. Like, I would say it may be my favorite film of this year. Uh, like, this in year, general. yeah. Yeah, 2023. Uh, it's between that and Godzilla. It's like, damn it. They're, they're, they're both uh, good films, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, yeah, I, I'm, I might give it a high eight. I probably have to watch it again to really give it, like, a true score because I feel like I, there's a lot of stuff I still have to catch. In the middle yeah, I think it should be on, like, I think you said they partner up with HBO, right? Oh, yeah, they got a lot of his, uh, his past films on there on HBO. So, Max, yeah, you, yeah. we might see this in the future probably on there. Oh, yeah, probably. Probably 2024 sometime there. Oh, yeah, I say March around there. Yeah. Cause it just came out this month, so it, it takes like a month or two for it to go on streaming services. Right. Yeah. What would you give it overall? Um, for me, I'm gonna go ahead and say a seven. Yeah. Okay. I feel like it's still like I feel like I feel like because I was a little just confused on like a little bit like on some things when when it came to like the ending and it the like it makes sense of him trying to chase that by going to the world you know um him dealing with his mom's death like a lot of it does make sense but some of it to me just doesn't and that's why i kind of feel like i need to yeah. kind of just give it like a medium like a high medium right but it's because of the visuals and i really love the artwork of it i love the atmosphere of the characters like the characters oh, yeah. the the setting the placing oh that's what i wanted to mention too like i feel like this might increase it to eight 
because I love the sound effects within everything that that does in the in the movie, like the footsteps, the drinking of water. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah. Yes, the wood cracking, uh, you know, crackling the leaves, kind of br- like blowing in the wind. Um, right. You know, the foley artist. If they use, if I had to say, if I had to speculate, they definitely did use a foley artist um, on yeah. the on this project because I mean. There's like you said, they kept a lot of things traditional when he had came to this film. So if a Foley artist, I'm not sure how they do it in, in film now. But there's like a couple of ver- a couple of differences when it comes to like you know how to do sound effects because you could just get away with sound effects on like di- through digital. But I right. think nothing really takes away of actually being a Foley artist because at least like they're the ones getting like actual materials of what's being presented in the movie so if it's snow they're gonna get something that kind of resembles it like a snow mush if you're stepping on snow or if it's you know you going through leaves or opening a door like they're they're recording most of the things like they'll try to match that sound the best way they can and i just think like if you pay attention to detail like for an anime film it is really like really really like down to the nail <laughs> I just have to oh, like, yeah. that's like a motif of his like a tradition that he does draw he's very films, precise like, like, yeah 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 in fact I believe I'm not sure if he did it in this film but I heard like some of his past films he would even use like human like voice actors to even do like the sound effects for like the wind and stuff like that like he wouldn't use like you know like engineered sounds like you actually use like voice actors the the sound of like right them just walking or like right. them breathing and, and the, which the is which is which is going to get a lot more of that kind of sound like that that you're that that is supposed to be matching what we're seeing right i feel like that that's a lot more traditional and it makes a lot more sense when you do it that way versus yeah. i mean I, I I don't want to go ahead and put like a lot of films on on blast, but I feel like there is a lot that just do generic like not a generic but like a common fucking sound effect on like I don't oh, know because yeah. there's a lot of things that are just AI you know that you could just use like fucking sound effects from anything YouTube you know already presets already built into like machines that you already have yeah. like sound pads and stuff like that so. Um, yeah like there's just so many ways to get sound effects where it's like why get why why we had why go that route I'm, I'm not even sure how much it costs to actually i guess it depends on like the budget itself on the film but you know because I, I don't know if it had it costs a little more to get a foley artist versus the freaking you know just getting a gene- like a regular kind of sound effect on on a computer so oh, yeah. but yeah, I, 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 I just i just feel like that's what probably would get it up to, to a for me it's just because of the sound effects the sound of music is great too um, oh yeah i forgot to mention that too it's like one of my favorite soundtracks from his like brother film yeah like a beautiful score like the way yeah some of the scenes played out with the music it's yeah like really well done so i i feel like because of the music and sound effects and stuff like that, I would say I'll give it an eight. Story-wise, I feel like I would give it a seven. Mm, okay. Uh, that's what I would say. Visuals, because I feel like, I, I, I don't want to feel like, like, that's the problem, like, we don't dig deep enough. Like, it visuals is good, right? Like, that's the first thing that we always see when we first see it. That's always great, but you got to appreciate a lot more other factors when we're talking about a film. You know, yeah, exactly. so that's why I mean, like, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, it's, just, it's a nine because of the way it looks. I would say the way it looks would be a, a an, either a seven or eight, too, mm-hmm. because it does look good. But I appreciate yeah. all the other work that was put into this film. Right. You know, yeah, yeah each piece plays a big factor. Yeah, in, absolutely. Like, the score. Exactly. The narrative, the story, the, the acting, the, yeah. the environment, you know, all of it comes to play. But yeah, this, this definitely was a great film from him and 
hopefully it's not his last, but if, if so, this is definitely a, a good cap off of his entire lineage of uh, movies that he had made thus far. Right. You know? I definitely would like to see more of what he does, or if not, you know, definitely a good finale. Yeah. All right. Well, I, that's how we feel, guys. Um, definitely like, subscribe on YouTube, um, Spotify, every all, all the platforms. Uh, follow us on Twitter if you can. And, uh, you know, we'll keep you up to date on actually um, a lot of content that we're going to be covering pretty uh, pretty soon. And hope you guys enjoy your holidays. Um, and, you know, New Year's is coming up, so Happy New Year to you guys as well. If we don't get an episode out by then. And you know, we'll we'll bring some more content coming to you guys for next year. All right.